What's up guys? You know what time it is. It's Friday. We're back with another What The Fitness. Live from somewhere with a waterfall, it's What The Fitness with your host, Lane Norton. <laughs> and in this week, I am not taking an email in or a follow up. I got my own WTF. So one of my favorite low carb zealots, Dr. Jason Dung, I mean Fung, um, was quoted recently on a podcast and here is the quote. The whole calorie story is not scientific at all. Billions of people have done calorie reduced diets and virtually none of them lose weight. Holy shit. All right, so where to start with that? So first off, let's give you some background on who Dung, I mean Fung, is. He is a nephrologist, meaning a kidney specialist, based in Toronto, I believe. And he's written a book called The Obesity Code, and he believes in what's called the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity. Now, I don't want to go through a really thorough synopsis and debunking of this model, but I'll do something relatively brief. The carbohydrate insulin model of obesity postulates that it is not energy balance or calories in versus energy expenditure that drives uh, weight gain or weight loss. Rather, it's simply insulin, which is influenced by carbohydrate intake. And the idea is that uh, insulin traps fat in fat cells by inhibiting lipolysis. And because the fat is trapped in fat cells, it's not accessible to the rest of the body to burn. And therefore people overeat in response to that and become obese. The idea for this model is that it's not so much that overeating makes you fat, it's that insulin actually makes you fat and you overeat in response. So a little bit of change in cause and effect. As far as Fung goes, I believe he's claimed things like you can store fat in a calorie deficit if you're having high carbohydrate and other such nonsense. So first off, let's kind of address the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity briefly. If this model were correct, it would mean that people who ate higher carbohydrate diets wouldn't be able to lose fat. If you have eyeballs, uh, you can see tons of stories of people who have been on high carb diets and lost fat. In fact, uh, when I was prepping for my bodybuilding shows, uh, my average carbohydrate intake was around 200 grams of carbohydrates per day. Now I had high days and low days, uh, refeeds and that sort of thing. But for the most part, it was around 200 grams a day. Uh, it dipped under that a little bit during the end when I was trying to get just a little bit leaner. But for the vast majority of my prep where I lost nearly 40 pounds, it was over 200 grams of carbohydrate. Now based on the model of obesity, the insulin model of obesity, that shouldn't have been possible. Take people like Alberto Nunez who get absolutely disgustingly shredded and Alberto was eating I think like three to 400 grams of carbohydrates a day. So there's your anecdote kind of disproving that. Further, if we look at the scientific literature, there are numerous studies thus far that have looked at very low carb diets versus higher carb diets with calories and protein equated in every single one of those studies, which are highly controlled in terms of either food is provided or they're in a metabolic ward, you do not see a fat loss advantage for the low carb diets. So there's one aspect of the carbohydrate insulin model obesity debunked. There's another aspect where this idea that uh, fat gets trapped in fat cells and is made inaccessible to the rest of the body, that's also not true. So they've actually shown that obese people actually have higher rates of fatty acid release into the bloodstream than people who aren't obese. So you can just take that and cut it out. So, Sorry. <laughs> fuck Holly. <laughs> just find that shovel, crawl up in that hole and die. All right. <laughs> Please don't leave that in. Uh, everybody's like, why is he so mean to his wife? So that debunks that aspect of the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity. Further, if you give uh, an inhibitor of fatty acid release in Jesus Christ, one more and you're gone. Would you love to leave right now? Yeah, actually I would. God. 
quiet 98 percent of the time except when lane's got a film <laughs> she's so angry further uh in trials where they give a drug that inhibits fatty acid release from fat cells they find that it actually didn't impede their weight loss at all uh, that is obese people so that debunks that aspect of it there is a drug called uh, liraglutide which is a glp1 mimetic and this drug increases insulin levels is one of the things it does it also causes people to lose significant amounts of body fat so if the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity was true and insulin is the dominant factor for weight loss or fat loss how can you give something and change nothing else you give that thing it increases insulin and somehow you lose fat but you know facts don't matter to low carb zealots so anyway when you're stupid it's like being dead it the pain is only felt by everybody else and you're not aware now let's just take a statement billions of people have done calorie reduced diets and few of them lose weight this whole statement is just all kinds of stupid i shouldn't have to address it it should be like somebody saying hey the earth is flat oh wait shit we have those people too finally apologists for dr dung i mean fung could try to state that well he's referring to the fact that over the long term people don't lose weight and keep it off meaning they regain it well that is true but if you look at the weight recidivism rates they are similar for people on low carb diets as they are for people on higher carb diets the common thread being when they're done with their diet they just go back to eating more calories they eat more calories i know fucking shocking in conclusion and i've been asking this for a while uh, i've been fortunate enough to actually have some people be willing to debate me and have discussion with me dr fung continues to make unfounded statements and not back them up with empirical evidence so jason i'm inviting you on a neutral podcast or any kind of scientific conference to debate your views on carbohydrates and insulin now in the past i have offered this to him and he acts like i don't exist so jason i'm not a hater this would actually help you if you could back up your shit but you can't and you won't hope you guys enjoyed this video if you're a jason fung lover and you just can't stand how i destroyed his argument uh, make sure you click the like button and the subscribe button and i'll catch you guys next week mm -hmm.